Hello and welcome to English for You. I'm Nicole and I'm Elsie. And what are we going to lear- be learning about today? Oh, we are、mm. going to learn different words today.、Mm. So there are so many words in English that ends in n y m,、mm-hmm. right? Like synonyms,、mm. antonyms. And today we're going to talk about contronyms. Right, contronyms.、Mm-hmm. Hmm. So they're the same word but with completely different meanings.、Mm-hmm. So what are they? Let's find out. Reading. Contronyms, the same word but with completely different meanings. Sometimes English can be puzzling, even for native speakers. For example, there were no people left at the party because everyone had left. What is the meaning of left in this sentence? Does it mean to stay? Or is it the past tense of leave? The correct answer is both. How is this possible? Left is a contronym, which means it is a word that has two opposite meanings. Another example is dust. As a noun, dust is the fine particles in the air. The verb to dust, however, means to remove those particles. Contronyms happen because language is alive. The meanings of words change over time. Consider the word cleave. It means to chop something in two. It also means to unite two things. That's because cleave has meanings connected with two different words in Old English: cleovan and cliffian. These words sound similar. But have opposite meanings. Contronyms show us how important it is to not only know words, but also know how they're used. The same word used in another sentence could mean something completely different. So our article begins by saying, sometimes English can be puzzling, even for native speakers. So when something is from a place, we say it is native to that place. For example, I'm a native of Ireland, and your native language is the first language you learned when you were a child. So for another example, we can say, I am a native speaker of English, and Elsie is a Chinese native speaker. That's right. So, you know, we see the native. Ha, it is a descriptive word, which means native speaker or native speaker. So, native speaker means 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 native speaker. What it really means. There are a lot of difficult things in English, even as a native speaker. <laughs> the article continues. For example, there were no people left at the party because everyone had left. Well, it's a terrible party if no yeah, one's there. <laughs> everyone had left. Okay, so wait.、Um, why are there two lefts in、oh. the sentence? Do they mean the same? Well, let's find out. The article asks. Asks us, what is the meaning of left in this sentence?、Ah. Does it mean to stay, or is it the past tense of leave? Okay, so we see the past tense of leave. What does、mm-hmm. tense mean? So in that sentence, we had the word tense. Now you might know the word tense from studying grammar. So tense. That means a form of a verb used for showing when something is happening. So when a verb is in a different tense, that tells us when the verb happened. And verb we know are our action words. So a tense tells us when a verb is happening. So we had the word left here. So I left the party. That's in the Past tense, so that has already happened. Tomorrow I will leave my house. So will leave. 
That's the future tense. So that hasn't happened yet. And every day I leave for school at 7 a.m. So I leave. That's the present tense. So those are the three tenses that we use the most. Past for when something has already happened. Present for when something is happening or happens every day. And future tense for something that hasn't happened yet but will happen. So there's also a couple of other different tenses like the conditional tense for something that might happen. That's a really interesting one. We use that with if. So if something happens, something else will happen as well. That's the conditional. But that's, we don't use that too, too much. The main three that we use are past, present, and future. So there's a couple of other grammar words that we use as well. So we know our verb is our action word and we also use nouns are another part of grammar. Those are a person, a place or a thing. And we use all these together to make up the English grammar. 然后，所以我们说到的 tense 指的就是动词的时态。那一般有 present tense 现在简单式，或是 past tense， 那就是过去式。所以，到底这个句子里面的两个 left， 一个是留下，还是两个都是留下，还是一个是离开，还是两个都是离开呢？我们来看一下接下来的文章喽。So what does the article say? So the article is asking us what does left mean in the sentence. The article continues. The correct answer is. Both, both. How is this possible? Okay, so left has two different meanings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How is it possible that a word has two such different meanings? Well, the article explains. Left is a contronym, which means it is a word that has two opposite meanings. So, opposite is something that is totally different in every way. For example. I thought my teacher would accept my project, but she did the opposite thing. She rejected it and said I had to make a new project. So in that sentence, our opposites were accept、mm -hmm. and reject.、Oh, but there、yes. are、mm. lots of other opposites、mm. too. 接受跟拒绝 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and lots of other opposites too. So we have up and down are opposites. Day and night are opposites. Can you think of any more opposites? Oh, there are really so many, like big and small. Big have and been small. said,、mm, they're totally opposite words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So opposite 这个形容词啊，代表就是截然不同的或是相反的。那我们从 introduction 一开始就讲到的 contronym， 它的中文是矛盾歧义词。那矛盾歧义词呢，代表一个字，它是有两个相反的意思。所以这个句子 ，There were no people left at the party because everyone had left. 第一个 left 是留下剩下，第二个 left 则是过去式的离开。Yeah, let's go back to our article. It says another example is dust. As a noun, dust is the fine particles in the air. So particles, those are very very small pieces of something. You can see particles sometimes when when the light shines through the air. Or maybe my apartment is just super dusty. <laughs> Okay, so particle 这个名词是微粒或是颗粒。那课文提到的 fine particles in the air， 那就是空气当中微小的颗粒，像是灰尘。And can we use dust as a verb too? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The article says the verb to dust, however, means to remove those particles. Probably what I need to do in my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> so to take something away is to remove it. So when you dust, you get rid of the dust. So another example would be: It was too hot outside, so I removed my jacket. Remove 这个动词呢，代表去除或是移除。那我们可以说 remove A from B， 那就是从点点点当中去除某物。So for example, you need to remove the garbage from your balcony， 代表你需要将垃圾从阳台清除。那我们刚刚讲到 dust 有名词代表灰尘，那这边呢，我们讲到它可以当动词用，代表是去除灰尘。So for example, when I was dusting the vase, I saw a crack。我在清理清灰。灰尘的时候看到一个裂痕，什么东西上面呢？就是花瓶。So now that we know what contronyms are, why do they happen? The article explains: 
Contronyms happen because language is alive. The meanings of words change over time. For sure, the English language is hundreds of years old, and right now we speak a very different language than, say, what Shakespeare spoke.、Mm-hmm. It's still English; it's the same language, but it has changed so much over the hundreds of years. So some words. Have some different meanings. So we have、um, old English,、mm-hmm, and、mm-hmm. we have Middle English,、mm-hmm. and then Modern English. Yes, so、right. that's what we speak now. We speak Modern English. 没错，所以呢，我们这边说 English is a constantly changing language. 英文不断的在演化改变。其实 every language is like this.、Mm-hmm. 每个语言都是在不断的改变。那接下来呢，我们的文章说到。Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's why it's so much fun to learn because there's so many different、right. words and so many things that change. Even now, words are always changing, and we get new words every year. It's really interesting.、Right. But let's go back to our article. We have another example here. The article says, "Consider the word cleave. Cleave. What does that mean?" The article tells us it means to chop something in two. And chop is another word for cut. So, for example, I chopped up the vegetables for dinner tonight. We're making soup. <laughs> so, chop can be a verb or a noun too, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 那 cleave 也是哦 ，cleave 呢，当动词用的时候是砍开、劈开，那就是 to chop something in two. 所以，我们刚刚讲到的 chop， 当动词用就是劈跟砍的意思。那刚刚例句说到的 chopped up the vegetables， 那就是切蔬菜，要来准备晚餐了。Now, before I get too hungry, let's go back to the article. We're talking about the word cleave. It also means to unite two things. So there we had the word unite, and unite means to bring things together. For example, the students united against the bully in their class to protect each other. That means they all came together to stop. The bully and unite is a really interesting word. If we look at how it's spelled, the first three letters U N I that's uni, and there's a couple of different words that use this uni、uh, phrase. So uni means one. So we have a magical creature you might know called a unicorn, and it's called a unicorn because it has one horn on the top of its head. So uni we can remember one. Bringing things together into one, and the opposite of unite would be to divide. That means to take something and break it into different pieces. So we have united and divided. That's where we get the famous the famous saying: "United we stand, divided we fall." Unite 这个动词呢，代表的是使结合、使联合、使统一。When I see this word, I think of America. Right, the、mm-hmm. the full name of America is the United States of America.、Mm. So, 里面就用到了 unite 这个字。那再来呢，我们说到的 cleave, cleave also means to unite. 好，就是紧紧的粘附、结合。所以一个是砍开、劈开，一个是紧紧的粘附、结合。所以 they are totally opposite. Hmm. Hmm. Well, let's go back to our word cleave. The article says. That's because cleave has meanings connected with two different words in Old English, cleophan and cliffian. So two very different words there.、Mm. Connect is another word for linked with or joined together with something. So, for example, the color red is connected with wealth. 哦，也就是红色跟 wealth 财富是有连结的，有关联的。那 connect 这个动词呢，指的就是显示点点点和点点点有关。那我们可以用 be connected with something。好，注意哦，我们介系词用的是 with， 那代表就是与点点点相关。那文中你看到 that。Are connected with, 可是呢 that are 被省略掉了。好，所以冠代碰到 be 动词的话呢，我们可以一起省略。这边的冠代是 that， be 动词就是 are。那接下来呢，我们在文中看到的 Old English 就是我们刚刚讲到的古英文。那它约莫出现在西元五世纪到十一世纪之间。那在写法啦，或是发音、文法上，都跟现代英文 Modern English 是有很大的落差的。那所以呢 ，cliff 跟两个古英文字相关。嗯哼。
So cleave is connected to these two old English words.、Mm. That means we get the word cleave from these words. That's how a lot of the language develops. There are these old English words, and they get used again and again. And maybe the pronunciation changes a little、mm-hmm. bit. You know how we say them changes, or we use them in a different way, and eventually they become. Totally different words. Right. Very interesting. <laughs> yeah,、mm. I think that that's why people study actually how language develops. Yes, it's a whole separate study. Really interesting. But anyway, that's why cleave has its two meanings. The article says these words sound similar but have opposite meanings. Oh, 没错，我们刚刚讲到那两个古英文字，它们听起来是很相似的，所以我们用到 similar 这个形容词，代表相似的、相像的。虽然声音相像，但是呢，意思完全相反。They have opposite meanings.、Mm-hmm. Opposite again. Remember, it means. Totally different. So one means to unite, and one means to chop. <laughs> The article continues. Contronyms show us how important it is to not only know words but also know how they're used. 是的，所以呢，在认识或是记得新单词的时候啊，你一定要知道怎么样使用它。So you have to know how to use them.、Mm-hmm, That's the、mm-hmm. most important thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because sometimes we can we can learn how a word is said, how it's written, but when we're looking at native speakers, how do they actually use these words? And sometimes they think of totally random things, you know, like when we had at the beginning the word left. So we know I leave, I left,、mm-hmm. but there are people left. So there are lots of different ways to use these. Contronyms, right?、Mm-hmm. And a lot of students here they like to buy vocabulary books to、mm-hmm. memorize the vocabulary、mm-hmm. words in them.、Mm-hmm. But the most important thing is, like we said, to me-、uh, to know how to use them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the best way to know how to use them is to listen to how native speakers use them.、Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The article ends by saying the same word used in another sentence could mean something completely different. 是的，课文呢后面就说到了不同句子里面的同个字，可能呢它的字义是完全不相同的。Like left,、mm-hmm. we just exactly, talked about.、Yeah. Okay. Now let's go to our for you chat question. For you chat. So today's question is. Will today's article change how you study English words? Why or why not?、Hmm, I think、hmm. so. I'll pay more attention to how we should use these words、mm-hmm. that we are picking、mm-hmm. up. We are learning.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, it definitely makes me more aware of the different meanings that words can have. And we learned a new word today: contronym. Contronym. Okay.、Mm-hmm. So again, what does contronym mean? Contronym means. A word that has two totally different meanings. 没错、mm-hmm. Okay. So next time when we learn new English words, we need、mm-hmm. to pay attention to how we should use them.、Mm-hmm. And we'll see if we can find any more contronyms. Yes. Okay. So I think that's all we, all the time we had for for you.、Mm-hmm. So、mm-hmm. let's say goodbye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Vocabulary review. Native. After a year in the big city, Sheila returned to her native village. Opposite. The two sisters have completely opposite personalities. Alice makes friends easily, but Betty is very shy. Remove. Please remove all your food from the fridge so we can clean it. Chop. To start, use a knife to chop the tomatoes into small pieces. Unite. The two smaller armies were united into one big super army. Connect. Police are searching for a man they believe is connected with the crime that happened last night. 智慧小补帖 Tense. Contronym. Particle. Cleave.
以上节目是由活用空中美语制作。活用空中美语杂志，请洽询全国各大书店。如遇索取视听教材，请来电零二二三六四四零零零零二二三六四四零零零，或上网查询，网址是 triple w dot english 四 u dot net triple w dot english 四 u dot net。